Hey guys. Today was my first day off um, since the hurricane hit. Uh, the very, the, on Shabbat after it hit, I went down to the fire department to see what I could do. I wasn't sure if we would have people that were displaced and needed shelter or food. And because I'm the food access coordinator and run the food pantry, I knew that I had um, resources that could help. I also knew at that point that um, we would eventually get help. And so like that day, I started thinking about what was it gonna take to serve our community. I knew that if myself on this little creek, this is like closer to normal flow. And uh, you can see behind me, my driveway used to be up here. Um, our creek grows, I don't know, 10, 15 feet. I literally can hike to the spring head. So I knew if my road looked like this, if my creek looked like this, that areas downstream were gonna be deeply affected and that there was gonna be flooding and that it was gonna be real devastation. Um, in talking to the fire department and they talked about what had happened and they're like, we're pretty sure a tornado came through. Um, you know, there's a whole swath of trees just taken out and I heard that the first day. So I had a sense of what the rest of our communities were going to look like and I started thinking you know long term um, it was really amazing to see uh, there's a gentleman who came in on Monday so we opened the pantry on Sunday and then on Monday we moved it and then on Wednesday we moved it again um, but there was a gentleman who came in on Monday and said what would it take to get this center open and running and of course the answer was power and he made it happen and he already had generators with his business uh, because that's part of what they have they have to run some massive amount of power and so they run generators and so he brought them in and we started running power and that's really what made it possible and then the donations started just flowing in and some came on Sunday more came on Monday more came on Tuesday. Uh, Tuesday, they were sorting clothes in the gymnasium with no light. Um, I think they were doing that Monday too. And then we had light and water and they just kept coming in. And the sheer volume of those designations has been amazing and a little overwhelming. And I don't mean overwhelming, like, oh my gosh, I can't believe this so much. Um, it's just the graciousness of people that feels overwhelming. And um, the blessing of people. And also seeing so many of our communities, and it's not just ours, like it's not just Buledine. Every single community that we're hearing from they literally were like, okay, the people on this street, how are we gonna take care of each other? And I get that, because I had that same conversation with my neighbors the day it happened. We knew that the neighbors up the hill from us were completely cut off. Their only access off of this side of the creek was through our front yard and over a little footbridge, and a rickety looking footbridge at that. Um, you know, and we had neighbors who were worried about what's gonna happen, and I said, you know what? We're in this together. We just need to know who's the who's the medical provider there's within this little holler. Who has access to what? Who knows what? You know, we'll make us together. We just have to do it together. And that's exactly what has happened in every single community. I mean, our guys here on our street, they're the ones who put the culvert back. They're the ones that made the road passable. They're the ones that made sure that we could get across the creek. It wasn't anybody else. And that's exactly how it happened. That's what we're hearing out of Poplar, out of Relief, out of Pigeon Roost, out of Red Hill. 
it was literally the neighbors on that street that got their excavators out and got their ATVs out and made sure that the roads were passable or that new roads were created because the old roads were completely washed away to make it happen. And um, there's a lot of people right now who are experiencing a tremendous amount of loss who saw houses washed away, who are still missing neighbors and friends and family. And those bodies are in trees. They're five feet below in mud. I mean, the power company showed a picture of one power pole that they had to dig nine feet down into the sand to get to solid ground to place a power pole. What that means is that someone's things or someone's family member could be at that same level. So the devastation is huge and it's like it's all across North Carolina, these North Carolina mountains. There was places where the water rose 40 feet in four hours. How do you even manage that? Anyway, for myself, I personally chose to do what I felt like I could do. And that was to make sure that we got head supplies in an organized fashion for our community and the communities beyond. And I just had a little teeny piece of that, guys. The volunteers in my community who have been there every day, spending 11, 12 hours a day at the community center, sorting, stacking, carrying boxes. I mean, there was a couple days, all they did was carry water, I swear. It was just case after case after case of water. That's what's made it possible. It's been the community, it's been the volunteers. And I wanna personally say a huge thank you to all the volunteers. Guys, I love you. I know we've had moments that it's been really difficult because let's be serious. We've all been a little traumatized. And this has been really stressful. And I know tempers have gotten hot, but you guys have poured your hearts out. And I wanna say thank you. That's for me personally. I want to say thank you. You have been absolutely amazing. I know we're all going to rebuild. And I also want to say to those who are helping us, please don't stop. But also be patient with us. A lot of us, myself included, but I know for sure the fire department, they haven't yet done their own looking at their property. We haven't been able to figure out what we're going to do with our property. So for instance, I've got a culvert out up here. It used to be there, as I said. And we don't really want a culvert there anymore. We prefer a bridge because that culvert, we know, we've been told, it's washed out multiple times. But it's gonna take an engineer to figure that out and it's gonna take some money and I get that. But I'd rather do it right once and not have to do it ever again. Because again, this isn't the first time that particular culvert has washed out. So I wanna ask those of you who are volunteering to be patient with the people of these mountains. You may have a quick fix to a solution, and we appreciate that. But some of us need time to sort out what we actually want and what we actually need. I appreciate every single one of you, those of you who have donated, those of you who've come up and looked at our properties, who've, who've cut down trees. I have a friend who she was in her house as alone as trees were falling down around her. And several days later, my husband and my boys went up to start working and there was a crew that had come in 
from another ministry and they were cutting it down. They were cutting down the damage, the, the danger, the trees that were at risk of falling and creating more damage. They were doing the work without being asked. They just came up and started working. There's been some amazing people. Yes, with the U.S. Men's Academy, but also just good-hearted, amazing people that have shown up. And I want to tell you, thank you. You've met the world to us, truly. Truly, you've met the world to us. And so we want to thank you. I want to thank you from the bottom of our hearts. Thank you for your donations. Thank you for the time. Thank you for everything you've put into this. Anyway, like I said, today was the first day I've taken off. I'd worked 15 days in a row, and I'm not, I'm not fussing about that. I'm just saying that's what it took to make sure that our community was taken care of. And I'm looking forward to being back at it tomorrow. I'm looking forward to meeting with you guys, chatting with you, making sure that the places that need supplies get the supplies they need. And I want to say that for every single one of you, whether you're somebody who comes through my front, the front door of the Beulah Community Center, or you're someone who reaches out to say, hey, I have donations, or you're a volunteer who shoveled some dirt, or cut down some trees, or jumped on an excavator and, and cleared a path what little or what much you did. I thank you, you're in my prayers, and may you be blessed.